We've been looking at this. I'm using it a lot this morning. And I said, you can't use it with this. At least not the way it looks at the moment. Sometimes in mathematics, you have to make things worse before they get better. Has anyone cleaned their desk before? And I don't know if your desk looks like mine. My desk is terrible. It's, it's a completely disaster. So when I decide, okay, I'm gonna spend my whole day cleaning the desk, I take everything off and eventually it ends up all on the floor, right? And then after it's all on the floor, and it looks terrible. I can actually organize it and get it in its right spot. The same thing is going to happen here. Nick, can you tell us what was your first line coming out of this? Uh, Z squared squared. Yep. Plus four z squared. Plus four. Minus four z squared. Okay, let's pause for a moment <coughs> before we move on from this line. I'm going to point out two things. Number one, uh, I write my z's with dashes through them. The reason why, as you might be able to look at the board, my z's and my twos look really similar, and yours all do too, especially when you're in a hurry and you're writing things. Uh, there's a good chance that a large proportion of the people in this room will one day do Mathematics Extension 2, which surprisingly has a lot of z's in it when you do this topic called complex numbers. So that's why I do this, just a habit. Secondly, what on earth has Nick done? Uh, he's done two things. He's rewritten this. We have a reason to do this. We have a precedent for doing this, this lesson. Why is this a useful thing? Have a look at the board, even. We've done this already today. Why did we do this the first time? We did it over here. Why did we do it? Any suggestions? To cancel out the power of the other. Okay, so when you've written the powers in a way that can be cancelled, like this can collapse back into this quite easily. Right? The reason we do that is, again, I keep saying this, it reveals the structure of what this object is. Z to the 4, we call this a, a quartic, by the way, quartic is in power of 4. Um, Z to the 4 is a square. It just doesn't look like a square. It's not dressed up as a square. Okay? But when you write the powers out, just like with these guys, you can see, oh, this is a square. There's a square hiding underneath here. And if it's a square, you can use all these other results that you know. That's not the only thing that Nick has done, though. What else did he do? Have a look at the line. Yeah, he added something, and then he subtracted the same thing because, I don't know, he's weird? He's just like, like, why is this useful, okay? Um, yeah, do you want to come around? That'd be good. So, adding and subtracting something. The first thing we want to notice is, this is fine. You can totally do this, right? This is the trick that we sort of employ. Uh, this is the trick we employ every time we work with fractions, and because they're so antisocial and won't talk to each other in this form, we multiply and then we divide, right? So that you can get a common denominator. We're familiar with this. We're just dressing this expression up, doing something and undoing it, which is totally fine, so that we can get something at the end that's more useful. Okay, now look at it. This object here. Maybe it doesn't stand out so obviously to your, your year 9 because you haven't been dealing with these quite as long. But the year 10s ought to recognize this thing. These three terms, what are they? These three terms here, and um, we, we've had some help to identify because he's written this is z squared. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. It's something squared. What is the something? Yeah. Z squared plus 2. <clears throat> Z squared plus 2. So this guy up here is written in the form something squared, something else squared, and nestled in the middle you have plus 2ab. Okay. Now maybe you're not used to recognizing that kind of thing and therefore that kind of thing as a perfect square. But you'll get better with, at it with practice. Um, I like to think of it like this. I've shown people this before. If this is A and this is B, this is A and this is B. So this is a square that you're looking at, right? A plus B times A plus B. Have a look at the rectangles you're going to get. What's the area of this one? What about the area of this one? And then you have these two weird guys. This one over here is A times B. So it's... This is the same, this is a congruent rectangle. It's just on its side. It's also AB. And there's where your 2AB comes from. Okay. 
So now that we've written this, we have successfully factorized it. Then you have this guy off on the end. I'm going to rewrite it slightly differently to make it more obvious what my next step is. 4z squared is also a square. What's it the square of? 2z. Two, two yeah. Yes. It's 2z all squared. Do you notice that? The 2 gets squared and then the z gets squared. Okay. And now we're almost there. We're almost there. What can I use now? Yeah. Z squared plus 2 minus 2z. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> z squared plus 2 plus 2z. We couldn't use difference of squares before, but after Nick helped us out, you can see difference of squares is there hiding underneath. This square, take away this square. Okay? Now, let me remind you, this is why simplifying is not always the best word to use. Is this thing simpler than what we started with? <laughs> At least in terms of what the expression looks like, no, it is not simpler. This is much nicer and quicker to write. However, this is more revealing. This shows us structure. And so this, I'm just looking, this is as far as I would go. You've been asked to factorize if you wanted to, depending on what z actually stood for, you could work out more things about z to the 4 plus 4 by knowing that you could write it in this form. Okay?